Minister David Shoebridge. Oh, thanks, Mr Chair. Thank you, Minister, for coming today. Thank you. Uh, Minister, do you believe that uh, private development, um, mm. particularly large subdivisions, um, should actually provide the necessary infrastructure so that communities can thrive? Can I, in, in answering that question, I, and I welcome that, um, can I turn to briefly the success that this government has? We've had record building approvals, we've had record building commencements, uh, we've got uh, record constructions and completions across Sydney. Uh, we're developing uh, new suburbs, uh, vibrant suburbs, uh, suburbs. Um, but I'm asking about the infrastructure, Minister, not yeah. the numbers. Do no, you believe no. those developers should provide the necessary infrastructure for communities to thrive? Developers already provide. Yeah, and yes, yes, I do, together with government. And uh, we've got a very strong position, this government, the amount of money that we are spending uh, on infrastructure, uh, creating you know, a, a city through strategic consultation, through collaboration, uh, ensuring we keep that local amenity and local character. Lots of uh, collaboration with developers, Minister. Including community engagement. Mm -hmm. And again, uh, I want to ensure that everyone here, uh, that the planning and development occurs from an evidence-based approach, uh, because it's important that we promote orderly development by integrating those social, economic and environmental considerations with regards to the, the principles of ecologically sustainable development. Mm -hmm. And of course, we'll continue to consider uh, advice from independent organisations because uh, as a government uh, we will consider all proposals and policies that seek to enhance our, our urban realm, particularly those that enhance connectivity and can contribute to resilient communities. So whether we're looking at our vertical villages or optimised communities, our priority precincts, <coughs> our priority growth areas or housing for key workers, uh, we're committed uh, and I'm committed as a minister to addressing that housing affordability challenge in Sydney Regional New South Wales to ensure that that infrastructure uh, goes in uh, either before or concurrently uh, as, uh, as we develop these new communities. Minister, that's perhaps the greatest collection of planning jargon I've yet heard in a single, in a single contribution. So very congratulations. Good. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, very good. Very good. Uh, <laughs> Minister, we've heard you go on every time. Minister, do you, know, do, you know, do you know a property developer called Keith Johnson? Um, I've heard of Keith Johnson. Have you ever met with him or representatives of the Johnson Property Group? Well, can I say that my diary disclosures are made public and I'd ask you to look there for all recorded uh, simple meetings. question, have you met with Keith Johnson or representatives of the Johnson Property Group? My, look, my diary disclosures are made public and I ask you to look there for all recorded meetings, but if you want to know uh, with respect to the contributions we take from developers to provide um, you know, that, that key infrastructure for these new uh, communities, mm. you know, to ensure that there is that local amenity and local character uh, I'll ask uh, Deputy Secretary Nelson uh, to probably unpack that uh, further. Uh, Minister, my question was about meetings with Keith Johnson. Well, I've, I've answered that question, yeah. Mr yeah. Chair. Yeah. Uh, Minister, are you aware... But your, your question was about... You know, Did you, have you met with Keith Johnson or representatives? No, no. You, you, you're talking you're about an earlier question, Minister. We've moved on. Minister, So are the, you saying um, that I answered that first question? That was your jargon answer. Yeah. You remember? Oh, that's good. We've, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Um, I'm just surprised. We've said that. This is all Minister, so pleasant, David. You tell um, the, the Are you aware that in October 2006, um, a planning agreement for land developed at Pitt Town was entered into with the then planning minister Frank Sartor, which provided uh, in 2006 dollars a requirement for the developers Keith Johnson and the like to provide 16 million dollars in infrastructure. Mm, look, um. In, yeah, in 2006, I'll make it relevant soon. I think I was probably shadow minister for, I think, multiculturalism or something at the time, or arts. Could have been arts. Yeah. Um, but look, um, Marcus, that was a high point. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a high point. I know. Yeah, minister, I know those, minister, those were heady days. Minister, can I, can I indicate, <laughs> this, this, this is not a laughing. Uh, minister, minister, infrastructure Chair, in Western Chair. Sydney is not a laughing order, matter. Are you aware of the uh, of order? The order. The, the member allowed the witness to be. come through the chair. It would be the, lovely to be able to you know, answer the question. You're you happy for me to, to seek advice and, and answer the question? Minister, you answer the question as you see fit. Are you aware of the agreement which required the developers to provide $16 million in essential infrastructure so Pitt Town could actually work? I'll ask uh, Deputy Secretary Nelson, uh, who probably has got more information with respect to this. Again, it was before my time as Minister, it was before our time in government, uh, Deputy Secretary. Uh, thank you, Minister. And yes, there was a VPA that was entered into at that stage, um, like many VPAs uh, across the um, region. 
Um, soon after, uh, there was a global fi financial crisis, and the then government made a decision to review the charges that were applicable in relation to all development contributions across the across the region to incentivise development to to keep things moving and to keep um, housing supply on track. The decision was made um, some eight years ago for that VPA then to be offset by 50%, and that was a standing policy position that the council made in relation, or that the state made in relation to VPA agreements. And so I think Mr Johnson's uh, contribution uh, was reduced to somewhere in the vicinity of $8 million, uh, which he has completed uh, the full payment of very recently, including the dedication of land for a new school. Well, under that VPA, Mr Nelson, the uh, 2006 you, you VPA, the through you, Minister, through me. Thank you. under that VPA, uh, Mr Johnson and the companies associated with him made a made, instead of paying $16.5 million, as they were legally obliged to, made the grand total payment of $375,000 to the Office of Environment and Heritage and a $2 million <coughs> in-kind contribution from, for some school land. Is that right, under the original VPA? Uh, that has since been... Uh, that has since been updated. So Mr Johnson has in fact completed the obligations under his VPA earlier this year and so his contribution was the equivalent of about 50% mm. of what the original VPA amount and that was consistent with all the decisions that the government had made in relation to encouraging development uh, some eight years ago at the time of the global financial crisis. Minister, are you aware that Pitt Town residents, when they bought the... Uh, the approximately 500 lots um, that were developed by Mr Johnson and companies associated with them, thought that they were contributing $42,000 in developer contributions for essential infrastructure under the original VPA. Are you aware of that? Mr Deputy Secretary. Uh, so I understand that the residents of Pitt Town, uh, Mr Shoebridge, um, felt that that was their obligation. We have, in fact... Because there was a legally binding we, we, VPA, wasn't there, we, requiring Johnson to pay the $16 million? If I can finish, we... We have had the contracts that those residents entered into reviewed legally, and there was no provision in those contracts which actually specified the amount that you've referred to. What, what the contracts did make reference to is the contribution that was applicable at the time payment was made. Which was $42,000? No, 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 that was reviewed. Point of order, Point of order. What, what we seem to be being asked about is arrangements made eight years ago when either... Minister, then Minister Sartor, or then Minister Keneally, was the relevant minister. Now, I know that, that uh, budget estimates are broad-ranging, but I haven't really seen budget estimates used for the purposes of cross-examining a, a current minister over the performance of a, of a, of a minister... Don't you worry, Trevor. Car. I'll make it very current very well, soon. Well, you haven't got there so far. Stop though. chewing up my time. No, I, I, I saw all the corners. Do you see the four corners episode on the Greens? Mm. Yeah, yeah. This is, this is, this, this, is not order, the, order. this is not the unicorn. Can we just uh, is, focus you know? on the purposes that we're at this inquiry for? Yeah. Thank you, the, Mr. David Shipp. Um Minister, do you recall signing an amended date deed uh, in relation to the planning arrangements and the voluntary planning arrangements for Mr. Johnson and his associated companies around Pitt Town, Mr. Deputy Secretary? Uh, the, the Minister has delegated those powers through to uh, my, my office mm. and those arrangements um, have been entered into. So is it true that not in ancient history but on the 5th of April or thereabouts this year under a delegation signed by you Mr Johnson got a $10 million gift by an amended VPA that cut his requirements, his contribution requirements from $16 million to just six million dollars. I, I reject the entire. Why do you premise give a developer a ten million dollar no, gift under delegation? I, I reject the premise of the question. I think it is unreasonable. You know, I think, quite frankly, you know, you are better than that. But, Mr. Deputy Secretary, no, he's not. Uh, there are there was no um, there was no deal done this year that wasn't agreed to ten years ago. Was there a deed so signed the into in April which gave a ten million dollar cut to this developer? There was, but it reflected an agreement, an agreed position that was taken a decade ago, at which time the government, the then government, made a decision across the board to reduce development charges by 50% to encourage supply during a period of very uncertain times for Australia. Well, Minister, and quite until frankly, you'll be blaming me for the Vietnam War next. No, Minister, I'm blaming you for the deed that was signed when you were planning, Minister, in April this year, which gave a $10 million discount to a developer. 
Why would you agree to a deed giving Mr Johnson and his associated companies a $10 million gift? We've already answered the question. It's back for my turn. Thank Mr Shoebridge. Oh, thanks, Mr Chair. Minister, when was the deed of amendment and release between yourself as Minister for Planning and the Johnson Property Group, Bona Vista, Bona Vista Properties, Bernadale Properties Proprietary Limited and Vermont Keys Proprietary Limited, when was that actually executed? Um, Deputy Secretary Nelson. Uh, thank you, Minister. Uh, there was a, a deed of amendment entered into earlier this year. What date? I think it was around April. All right. And until that deed of amendment was entered into on the 5th of April, um, is it true that the developer was required to pay some $16.5 million in Deputy developer contributions? Deputy Secretary uh, No, it's not true. Uh, there was uh, numerous pieces of correspondence backwards and forwards between uh, the government and Mr Johnson, uh, as there was with numerous other developers post-2006, and at no stage since around about 2006 has there been an expectation that uh, Mr Johnson would be paying $16 million. Was there a legally binding deed in place until it was amended, uh, requiring Johnson Property Group to pay some $16.5 million until it was amended on the 5th of April? Deputy, Deputy Secretary Nelson. Uh, there was an original uh, agreement which uh, specified those amounts, uh, but there was uh, 10 years of correspondence and um, agreements in terms of backwards and forwards letters and the agreement that we amended this year uh, simply reflected the commitments that had been made over 10 years. And might I say, had we not made the amendment, we couldn't have put it up publicly on the website. All of our VPAs are publicly advertised on the website, and had we not made that amendment, it would not have been there for everyone to see. Minister, will you provide a copy of the deed and all the associated correspondence that Mr. Um, um, uh, Mr. Nelson has referred to? on notice this committee? Look, um, Mr Chairman, I think it's just, again, critical. Um, Simple question, Minister. Will you provide the deed and the associated yeah, I think, correspondence? He's answering the Mr. question, Nelson. David. Don't right. interrupt him. I, I think it's, a, it's a critical at this point of time to, again, point out that this was you know, an agreement made by the previous government and previous ministers, um, and, a, and a government, can I say, that was supported by the Greens, preferenced by the Greens, um, that kept them in power. Um, Bollocks. So, well, I've got, you, you're, you're saying you, you, <laughs> Bollocks. you are saying might not be your section of the Greens, Bollocks. right? Yeah, but um, why do I have to get the communists? I like the, the nice Bollocks. green ones. Yeah, but, um, <laughs> why do I have to get the full? Huh? Oh, order, yeah. order. Oh, that's enough. Oh, really? Let's, let's get back to you, really. Back Look, to the question, order, please. No, no, point of order. He's got to withdraw that. He, he, he. Yeah, sure, seems to take yeah. as a licence. Okay, that order. Can it's been withdrawn, yeah. Minister. Um, look, uh, the deed is on Outrage. the website. Yeah, it's on the interweb. So I would direct the, the honourable member to 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 go to our website. Um, Minister, so will you provide the correspondence that Mr. Nelson said um, uh, uh, had required the amended deed? Will you provide that correspondence on notice? I'm not really inclined to. What do you want to take it on notice? Yeah, I'll take it. Matter for you. Yeah, just Gipper it. Matter for you. Yeah, I'll take it on notice. Minister.